ലണ്ടൻ so he he takes often take the bus uh, on route 29 to get to work uh, but he could he have few other choices he could actually walk it's not too far away and uh, he could cycle right so uh, now if you are in this situation generally you waste a lot of time thinking oh maybe i should walk uh, so i mean this london then i mean buses get late sometimes right so if the bus is late you are thinking oh should i walk or etc you will like waste a lot of time doing that uh, so uh, so actually this a demo we did for one of the analyst uh, demos uh, for analyst right so um, so let me uh, so so the, sorry so the idea is that sorry idea is that if you have a system that would tell you what to do right uh, tell you what's the state is the bus coming uh, close by or uh, it's better to cycle now right so if if there's such system it will give paul peace of mind he he can do more useful things rather than worrying about should i be cycling right and most importantly he still has the optimal solution right which is also very important right uh, so so basically this uh, the uh, we this is a demo we did for analyst right so uh, so the idea is that uh, so here this is a very simple mobile app that give him the status right telling him that uh, when he say that i want to go there it keep updating the status right and this kind this uh, uh, visual view point in which parts are blocked and delayed etc right so so for that um for that demo for that demo we we basically uh, build this right so basically uh, two engineers in about two weeks build this right so uh, now what i'm trying to do is try to explain how our platform could be used to solve this kind of a problem or this kind of a use case okay so when you try to do this kind of a use case there are a lot of components right uh, so you have data so uh, of course you will collect the data and analyze it and do something with that but some of these things you have basically from the time the data is collected you have you can wait right for some other things for example if bus get delayed and if paul is on the move you should tell him fast as possible that uh, uh, bus is not going to come right i mean it's not very interesting for him to know tell him like 3 hours later that oh you should have cycled right Uh, so 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 actually so for based on and also of course you can you ha- you should to give the best experience you should uh, do some prediction right so from like for example from the way bus took how long bus took from here from a to b maybe you could predict it will be delayed by the time it get to c so you tell him early and you say some time right now when you try to do this thing so this chart describes so there are several big data technologies and how they are placed on these two dimensions how much data you want to process and how fast you need resource right for example technologies batch analytics technologies like mapreduce right it works 
it works, it scales, etc. but only if you have some time, right? Then technologies like CEP and other real-time technologies, they work. Uh, so they, the scaling them is a little bit more challenging. However, they can respond to you very, very fast, within milliseconds sometimes. Okay, so, uh, so, this, so this picture shows WSO Analytics Platform. And WSO Analytics Platform brings together all these different technologies Right? So the way to read this picture is there are three stages. You collect data, you analyze and make decisions, and you communicate that to the end user. Right? Then when you come to analysis, you have four choices. Right? And when you come to communicate, you have four choices. But actually, like for example, you can do real-time analytics and do a visualization. That's fine, right? Any combination works. Okay, it doesn't mean to say that you can only do this here. So, so what we'll do through the rest of the talk is go through each of these. Hey, it's, it's predictive analytics? Uh, yeah, it is. so this is pre uh, like you predict this machine learning pretty much. I think prescriptive analytics also is same thing, I think, yes. Okay, so the first is collecting data, right? Basically, uh, we have uh, this single API that you can use to collect data. And um, so, so the way this works is that just like uh, before putting database data into a database, you would go and create a table, right? Before putting data into our platform, you go and define a stream. And you tell that it has, it's, it's like, it's, it's very much like SQL create table statement. You say, I have a stream which has these, these fields, okay? Then you could publish the data, right? So the, our model is that you could publish one, then you could analyze it any way you like in using any of these uh, techniques uh, I mentioned. Right, so at the code level, so basically you could write your own uh, like publisher if you want to, but we also have a lot of um, like inbuilt publishers. For example, if you take our products, most of them has in inbuilt sensors. Also like we have like we have agents that could read logs and publish so on and so forth, okay? So, uh, so these are some of the like for, uh, example scenarios of collecting data. Like for example, you can collect data from agents inside our products. You could collect data from uh, from logs, like for example, using Logstash. Uh, you could collect data from J, uh, JMX stats, JMX uh, like pull any data exposed to JMX, right? And we can ingest data from JM, uh, this JMX, this is JMS messaging, right? RSS feed, or you could write on your own, right? It, I mean, uh, pretty much if you have some data, uh, like, I mean, either we already have agent or like a little bit of work, you could write the agent that will send the data. Okay, so, so that is, okay, now we have the data. Now we go to the analysis part, right? So the batch analytics, right? So the idea of batch analytics is that I take the data from the disk, do some processing, right, and write to another disk, right? So because the data comes from the disk, right, it takes time. The, the processing could take from a few minutes to may sometimes a few hours based on how much data you have, right? So that's, uh, so, uh, but this very scalable, etc. So the example of things you do with this is things like minimum, maximum, average, correlation, so on, etc. So the things we, you calculate with this, we call them KPIs, often, which stand for key performance indicators. These are uh, some numbers that give you high level understanding of how you are business is doing, I mean, whatever you are measuring is doing, like, for, for example, uh, uh, the, like, years back, right, when people go to mining, right, they used to take this small bird called cannabis, 
right? Because the small birds are very, very sensitive to oxygen, right? So if you run out of uh, oxygen in the mine, they would knock out. Then you should be running out, right? So the KPIs are your canaries for your business. If they give you a, they give you a basic understanding of how things are, and if it doesn't look good, you should be acting, okay? And all this data are presented as a dashboard. I, I will come to that, right? So when you do the, the, uh, the way we let you do batch queries is uh, using this language called Spark SQL, right? Actually, all the analytics we, uh, for all the analytics, we let you use some form of a SQL-like language, right? Because uh, SQL is very, very powerful with handling the uh, like with the data operations, right? They are very expressive, like and short. However, when you when the available operators can't handle the scenarios you want, you could write extensions, right? So uh, actually, if you go to the documentation, you will find like you could basically write Java code and attach it as extensions. So you could do pretty much anything there. So between these two, it gives you a lot of flexibility. So this. For most cases, you could write queries very, very fast, but when you want to get to details, right, you could write custom uh, extensions and do it. Like this example query. I mean, if you know SQL, you would understand what this does. What, when you write this query, the, we would com convert that into a uh, Spark, using Spark to a MapReduce job and run it on a like cluster and get you the results, okay? So this all you do. Right? So let me give you a few examples of uh, batch analytics. Right? For example, here, this is a visualization of uh, like, so basically there are two segments. One segment is different APIs, other segment is different countries. So you could see that like, so different APIs are different, used in different combinations by different countries, etc. Right? So it's a visualization designed to bring in that information and it is color coded to control how your attention would direct, right? So the the idea of this kind of charts, the especially a color coding, et cetera, is to give you on a single glance I, how it is doing, let you understand how it is doing, right? Okay, so uh, then, okay, great. We, we can do batch analytics, right? Using these nice queries. However, for some use cases, the value of your insights degrade fast with time, right? For example, like if you are doing urban planning, if you are trying to decide what's best way to put the um, uh, traffic light in Colombo City, uh, you can take six months. I mean, no big deal, right? But if the analytics says, if your Fitbit says that you are going to have a, a heart attack in next 10 minutes, I mean, you better you know it now. I mean, it is interesting to know it in <laughs> other people <laughs> later, but not for you, right? So, so, so there are a lot of these use cases where uh, the value of what you do degrade very, very fast with time. It worth, I mean, stock market worth millions if you know it now. It's a curiosity after a few hours, right? So, so the that there are separate technology that could analyze data and respond within seconds to milliseconds, right? So those we call real-time analytics, right? So uh, for real-time analytics, we provide this uh, technology called complex event processor. So uh, it is called WSO2CP, right? So also uh, our, so, so the way our products are uh, placed are, is that, um, uh, so there's a one product called WSO2 Data Analytics Server, which has everything. It has batch, it has real time, it has machine learning, everything together, right? And there are some use cases where you want only one. Of course, we have another distribution that give you one, right? But I, I think that your default choice should, should be the big one because uh, basically in either way you use the, the cost and exact price based on how many instances you use Right? not based on like whether how many parts you used. Right? So we only give those other distributions for very specific use cases, but for generally you should go with the uh, what we call DAS. 
right? So, but this technology, again, data is come as streams. They can come in many forms. You could go and write a query, SQL-like query, that describe what need to be done. For example, this query says that from this stock code stream, keep a window, time window of one minute, right? Then join it with this other streams, another window, right? On this condition, right? And send the results into this stream, right? So this, this, this language is very, very powerful. Like, uh, I'll explain later, like, we use this to completely monitor a football game only on these queries, and, like, there are very complicated queries done on few lines, right? So uh, if you are, like, if you are using this, it takes some getting used to, because it is very powerful, you, you have to understand the model, but it is very, very powerful, and when you get used to it, like, you could do a lot. Okay, so this uh, example, this is actually a real use case we did for a customer. So the idea is that basically in their use case, they would use, uh, basically most of our phones has Bluetooth low energy now. So they would monitor the people going around. They don't know who you are, but they know this, somebody is going around with this ID, your Bluetooth ID, right? From then, basically, they could get a sense of, like this done for airport, how many people in here, where you are, which, like what you are doing, is there like congestion here, so on and so forth, right? So basically, uh, like, um, uh, so actually, so the, this, this actually production, it's, it's running right now. I mean, the, so these, uh, the data come from sensors are very unreliable, like because they, they can't pinpoint the location, it's like, like, 20 to 50 meter, like the uh, error in it. So it takes a lot of work to actually, like, so there's like out of order processing, Kalman filters, so on and so forth, to get the accuracy, right? But uh, but the, this let you track and make decisions online, right? So there are a lot of other use cases like um, traffic monitoring, retail, uh, airports, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, so this this that use case I was talking about. So the this uh, so there's a nice video I'm not going to play it, but uh, I'll share the slides. You can have a look at it. It's about ten minutes. But this uh, a real football game pe people play it with sensors in their shoes and in the ball, etc. Right, and we use CP queries to track. Like for example, very complicated query we did was tracking ball position, right? Tracking how long each person control the ball, right? So which actually we we could we we that query we could bring down to like two queries, two like that select statements, right? So it is it is very very powerful language, right? Okay, so then uh, so um, that's a so if you want to scale, so so on defaults we could run CP services like as a uh, one main server and active passive two servers, but there are use cases where you want to scale. Like then we could run it on top of Strom. You write the same SQL-like query, and if you basically turn on a flag, and you have to give using the query language. You could you have to tell us how to partition the data so that I, we can run it parallelly. When you annotate that, we automatically convert into a lot of CP engines run on top of Apache Strom. Right? If you go to this link, it talk about this in a lot more detail. Okay. So that's for scaling. Okay? Then, okay, so that, that's real-time analytics. Then, uh, if you are, let's say you are trying to understand a data set. Right? So if you are trying to understand a data set, the best way to, uh, so okay, now take a real-life example. Uh, you are talking to a customer. You are trying to understand his use case. What's the best way to understand that? You ask him questions, right? Whenever you are, you keep asking him questions, he'll respond, right? So if you are trying to understand something, especially a data set, the best way to understand that is to issue ad hoc queries until you understand it enough. But the trick is, to that to work, it has to respond fast. Generally, they say humans run out of their patient when it's more than 10 seconds, right? So you need to 
get back within 10 seconds. So um, now then the batch analysis doesn't work. It takes too long, right? And there are, so it's like this. There are people who are, who really want to do it, who like go for coffee, do other things, come back and do this. But most people, at least you don't love that experience. So this is a different kind of analytics that let you, uh, let you ask questions. So you could issue queries like this and you will immediately get answers. So this works using Lucene-based index in, in the background, right? It will respond very, very fast. So this is a way to given a data set, you could give this kind of queries and get understand what's going on, okay? The finally, the predictor analysis or machine learning. So, uh, okay, uh, so I think, uh, so if you, if you are, a, I think most of us think we are good programmers. If I ask you to write a program that drives your car, could you do that? Who can do that? I, actually, you can't. It's very, very hard because there are so many edge cases. So the way these kind of uh, problems are solved is different way. You give him a lot of examples, right? You give him a lot of data on the, how the road look like, and you give him Oh, when it's like this, you should be braking. When it's like this, you should be accelerating. A lot of data. Then, the technology called machine learning can automatically build a program that can solve that problem represented by those examples. Right? So that model is people, we, that program, we call it a model. Right? So there are a lot of tools to do this. Right? So you, we use this library called... Uh, uh, Spark ML base. Now they uh, it, now it's called ML lib. Actually, I haven't updated. Sorry. Okay. So uh, with WSO2, so we have a product called WSO2 Machine Learner. So, but within the platform, you could either build models using our machine learning product, or you can use this famous language called R, and build the model and export it as a PMML. Those models you could use within WSO2 CP or WSO2 ESP. Okay, so that's how we support machine learning. The, uh, the machine learner is a wizard that let you start with the data set, but go through it and take those decisions. Uh, if there, there's a wizard that helps you make those decisions. So you, even with, no, without being an expert in machine learning, you could uh, do useful things. So a uh, few examples. This is a very, very most important example is predictive maintenance, right? For example, uh, the, the very famous example is that they, when they drill oil, right? So if, if your drill actually break down while you are drilling, it'll go, you can't retrieve it, which is very, very expensive. So you're actually better off if you are, even you are like little bit, worry a little bit that mm, it might break, uh, Basically, send you to repair, use a new one, etc. Right? So, I mean, same for the car, right? I mean, none of us want, uh, I mean, we would rather service more regularly rather than having a breakdown because we all hate it, right? So, so the, the idea is that you use machine learning to predict the probability something will break down, right? And uh, basically do the preventive maintenance early. Uh, this is also another, actually Isabel also mentioned this, this is another uh, custom use case, it's in, it's in live, right? So here, uh, so it basically predicts how long it takes to go through the security at the airport. And basically using your uh, airline app, it'll tell you, like if you have a flight, it tell you, okay, current situation is like this, you should be at least one hour before, so on, and keep giving you updates, right? Also. Uh, that has another advantage that if you are within uh, this another this scenario from that other tracking thing, if you are in the security and the fl flight is going to go, they could see that you are here, right? They might come on and basically talk to them and pull you in and go in, quickly go through the security and go in, right? So the, it enables this kind of very, very interesting use cases. Uh, the finally, this uh, fun thing we did, so there's this uh, famous game, like yearly game in US called American, uh, American football game, it's called Super Bowl. So we tried to use machine learning to predict the winner, and we didn't get it right, right? We got, we got like seven out of 11, 
Uh, and in, very interestingly, actually, the, all the four predictions, we make it wrong by predicting a certain team is losing one team. They won all those four and win the championships. So it was like this when we were, Sri Lanka won the World Cup, like somebody, like, because they, that team has done very, very bad on the earlier season. So all the model says no hope. I mean, the, like Microsoft was predicting same problem, right? They were saying, the, given the same prediction, <laughs> doesn't work out, right? So, but I mean, uh, so, uh, but it, this is also another, uh, another interesting uh, view that how the prediction works. I mean, there are limits to you can predict, and there's some randomness you can never predict, right? Okay, so uh, great. So the la we are getting to the last. So uh, the point, okay, fine. You have all these kind of analytics. Now you have to get it to the end user. One is you do a dashboard. The goal is the dashboard is your car dashboard. It is very very boring when it is good. Something bad, it grab your attention. Okay, that's the goal. Right? You don't need your cars to be car dashboard to excite you, right? So, so that's the goal. Okay, so we we give you several ways to do this. Uh, so, okay. and uh, so we actually have a wizard that let you go through and create your own dashboard. But um, like okay, this, don't like if you have complicated interactions, then you have to write code, right? Uh, so the other way is you could generate alerts. Right, so these alerts can be emails, SMS, or like for complicated use cases. For example, you you can send the event into ESB, right? Which uh, which can use a lot of connectors to do more, much more complicated things. Okay, so so these are uh, these are some customers you use the, the platform right now in production, right? Some names we can't name; they are anonymously given, but some names are given. So if you go to these videos, et cetera, there are customer talks in WSO2 cons describing this, what they're doing, et cetera. Right? And to summarize, uh, so these are our key differentiators, right? So we are open source, right? And uh, so we let you like publish uh, once, but analyze it in any ways. It's very scalable. We give you like very flexible SQL-like query languages, right? And we have very like, um, rich set of connectors you could connect, pull, push from any kind of data you like. Uh, so, to summarize, right? So this is the platform you could publish, publish in once, right? You could do all these kind of analysis, and then you could get the results into the end user in ma many different ways. Everything in a single platform. Thanks. Everybody.